The man you know as George Foreman, the kindly old man who probably sold you a muffler or a grill, wasn't always who he seems. George Foreman grew up in Houston's notorious Fifth Ward. He goes from street mugger to Olympic gold in two years time. As he turns pro, he is taken under the wing of three great champions. Archie Moore taught the technique. Sandy Sadler laid down the law and Sonny Liston was there to teach him the hard way in the ring. These men created the monster that went on to terrify the heavyweight division for decades. If he got going, there was no stopping him. The young version of George Foreman only fought one style, seek and destroy. He had a lot to learn in not a lot of time. His early years saw him fight and invariably demolish one opponent a month as he learned the tricks of the trade from the superstar team around him. As always, click that like button and subscribe to stay up to the minute on all sweet science. Against George Chuvalo, one of the most durable men in boxing history, George Foreman could finally open up with his full arsenal. He battered Chuvalo like a heavy bag. Chuvalo a little bit puffy around the left eye. See on Chuvalo's side, the first two rounds are. Chivalo wouldn't go down to anything less than a machete. Never been off his feet. Two minutes left in the round. So the ref was forced to jump in and save him after three horrifying rounds. Go the way you figured it would go, George. Oh, yeah, I don't want to kill nobody, but you know. He'd racked up 34 knockouts in 37 fights and earned his crack at a legend. Joe Frazier was still flying high off his win over Muhammad Ali in the fight of the century, flattening him in the last round with his signature left hook. Joe Frazier was a consummate pressure fighter. He brought a relentless pace and to the death toughness. We'll find out tonight how much the Ali fight took out of Frazier, if anything. And we'll find out tonight just how good George Foreman is in punching and in taking a punch. I but he had one Achilles heel. Joe's style of defense, his combination of a cross guard and bobbing head movement made him a sucker for an uppercut. Hear him. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! George was picking the champion off the canvas every time he threw one. And already this fight is proving out what some have expected. Oh, that left is getting in there underneath. Six knockdowns and two rounds saw George take Joe's championship like Debo borrowing a bike. It is over! It is over! It is over in the second round! George Foreman is the heavyweight champion of the world! I want to go out and preach what I've done, and that's my fight from now. My fight is with the people. The world didn't know what to make of George as champion yet. They thought if anyone could figure out Foreman, it would be Ken Norton. Ken was an excellent boxer who gave Ali all he could handle, including breaking his jaw in a decision victory. When Ken challenged for the championship, we expected to learn more about George's overall arsenal. Play facing it because Foreman is a terrific puncher. 
All we learned was running away wouldn't work either. George put on a vicious clinic of ring cutting and smashed a shell-shocked Ken Norton in less than two rounds. Really back. Oh, there's the right again. Foreman punched him as he went against the ropes. Rondo is calling it a knockdown. That Foreman is a terrific puncher. There goes Norton again against the back, but Norton is already rubbery legged and hurt. And Foreman is. Oh! George Foreman is a stunning winner and still the heavyweight champion of the world. Call it no cut. After his famous defeat to Muhammad Ali, Foreman needed a rebound. Far from a soft touch, Foreman's return to the ring came against Ron Lyle. Ron did eight years for a gang-related murder he didn't commit. He just kept his mouth shut, did his time, and 1,000 push-ups a day in his cell. When he met George Foreman, neither man had any plan beyond destroying the man in front of him. A good right by Lyle. A good right by Lyle, and he's got Foreman in trouble. He's got him in trouble. God staggering off the ropes, and Lyle all over him. And they advise us in yelling to Foreman, The fourth round was one of the best in heavyweight history. Both men went down. At the end of the round, Foreman was dropped flat on his face. Foreman goes down. Miles fights back. Foreman came out in round five, still badly rocked, placed Ron Lyle in a corner, and absolutely ended Ron Lyle to win the fight of the year. Just punching away. Each fighter in turn leaving himself open. Both men are really working there. Foreman used to fire in Lyle's waiting just a little too long. They're both fighting. When it seemed Lyle had command of this ever-changing bout, the ebb and flow of the... In his youth, he fought like Michael Myers. In his second comeback, starting at age 38, he fought like a stone Buddha. He took his comeback slow, easing himself back into boxing and destroying a few good men too brave for their own good. The moment people started to take George seriously, was his meeting with Jerry Cooney. Jerry was a former title challenger with a mean left hook. Not that we would have time to find out. It took Big George all of two rounds to post an uncharacteristically gorgeous knockout of Jerry Cooney. The left uppercut put him out cold, but the right hand off the pivot caused the ragdoll physics. His finest night came as an old man. Michael Moore had just beaten Evander Holyfield to win the heavyweight championship. Moore looked around a stacked weight class trying to find some light work for his first title defense. He saw names like Lewis and Tyson and Bo. He decided to take on 45-year-old George Foreman. He's going to have to punch and punch and try to club him and just keep beating him. But I don't think that's going to happen. So you see no chance that George can win the fight? Very little. You can understand why he chose George in the early rounds. Foreman was never going to keep up with the speed of the former light heavyweight. And George, as much as not the fastest in the world, I think he'd be able to... Moore used his converted southpaw style to batter George with his lead hand. Used his light feet to get away before George could get him back. That right hand lead. <laughs> George had learned many lessons in his 45 years. Not just the technical lessons. George learned the invaluable ability to take a beating calmly. Respect for Foreman decreases from round to round. I have 
the sense here, Gil, that Moore feels as though he has felt Foreman's power and it's not going to hurt him. That could be a big mistake. He learned in Michael Moore's case, he could more than afford to take one, to give one. At a nearly two to one exchange rate, it was clear that George was down on the cards. The work he had done all fight was ugly and subtle. His task was completed all the same. By round 10, Michael Moore committed a fatal mistake. He just stood there. The first one, two froze Michael. The second one broke his mouthpiece. George turned to pray in his corner as Jim Lampley made the immortal call. As boxing hailed its newest and oldest heavyweight champion. And once again, heavyweight champion of the world!